Kia ora YouTube, welcome back to another writing walkthrough. It's two, bass player of Alien Weaponry. And through the series, I am going to be showing you a little bit of an insight into my writing process when I am writing music for Alien Weaponry. And this will be the second episode, I think, of this little series here. And today we're going to take a look at Draft 30. I have been writing for Alien Weaponry now for like the past year and through that process I have accumulated about 50 draft songs. 50 songs where for the most part I write a lot of them on live stream. So I live stream on Twitch and I live stream on TikTok and I'm going to start live streaming now on YouTube as well. So if you want to tune in to those live streams where I write this music live for you over a few hours you can either head to the caption and follow me on twitch or keep your eye out for those same streams here on youtube but so yeah this is draft 30 we wrote this a while ago it's in drop c sharp which is a very common tuning for alien weaponry music we've already got the structure here i've already written the song so really all i'm going to do is walk you through sort of what the ideas were, why I sort of went down the path I did, maybe inspire you and sort of show you how, how I work, how I took over when, when I'm writing music. So if anyone's curious as to where I even get my ideas from in the first place. Now, obviously, for anyone that's really, really followed me for a long time will know that my biggest heavy metal influence is Trivium. So a lot of the music I write or like to write personally is very Trivium-esque, okay? However, Alien Weaponry is not a Trivium-inspired band, so to speak. They are inspired by the likes of Lamb of God and Killswitch Engage. And so when I joined the band, I had to learn and listen to the music that influences Alien Weaponry. Drum and bass is another one. See, so lots of the boys' influences aren't actually from the heavy metal world. So they take a lot of their influences from electronic music. Now, the electronic music influence is where the idea for this specific song came in. And when I joined the band, I actually sat down and I listened to their catalog start to finish. First album, second album, over and over. And I took notes on chords that Lewis uses a lot, structure that Lewis uses a lot, riff variation. So how many different riffs? does Lewis tend to put in songs? How did it compare to the first and the second album? How did those songs perform in comparison to the first and second album? Things like that. Uh, super nerdy. Um, if anyone wants to see it, maybe I can make a video on that one day. Let me know in the comments below. Nerded out alien weaponry song structure spreadsheet that I used to help learn to write music for alien weaponry. And this is the big key about my process. I'm not writing music for myself. Okay, if I was writing music for myself, I might write very different music. I am writing music for Alien Weaponry. It has to invoke in the audience the sound that Alien Weaponry fans are familiar with while still having my influence. So I've got to figure out how to sprinkle me in, not sprinkle in Alien Weaponry, if that makes sense. Anyway, so this song here, if anyone's familiar with our song Ahika, Ahika was influenced by drum and bass rhythms. Not that I'm using drum and bass rhythms in the song, but I wanted to kind of evoke that same upbeat, energetic feel that electronic music has. So let's take a look at the main riff for Draft 30. <laughs> So that's the first riff. Let's take a look at that in the context of the music. Right, so pretty upbeat, pretty energetic. Recording wise, Pretty straightforward. Let's go over our tones first and foremost. It's pretty much going to be the same for most of these series, but I'll do it anyway for those who may be tuning in for the first time. Bass tone, Dark Glass Ultra Neural DSP plugin. Drums are Mixwave Gojira plugin. So the Mario plugin, the MIDI drums, super awesome drum sound. Guitars 
I've mentioned this before, but I tend to swap back and forth between Archetype Gojira and Archetype Nolly. This here is Archetype Nolly, and this is the tone setup for anybody who's curious. You know, I know a lot of people that make this sort of content online. Potentially, they are producers themselves, and so they make this content to, you know, advertise their craft, also while being musicians themselves, of course. But so they sort of have a tendency to hold back uh, a lot of those secrets. Uh, which I can only imagine is so that people feel inclined to go and use them as a producer, right? But I'm not a producer. I'm just a guy who makes music. So I'm I'm not too worried about hiding or holding back any of that information for you guys. So if there's something you guys want to see in the series, you know, whether it's my EQ systems or whatever like that. Firstly, I should preface, I am by no means a professional at this. I really am only learning the bare basics or have only learned the bare basics to write music and make drafts that at least sound somewhat decent for the band when I hand it to the band. But if anyone wants to see that kind of stuff, then I'm more than happy to show you. Now, we've also got a bit of synth happening later on, and that is coming from Analog Lab 5 right here. Now, this isn't the actual tone, I don't think, but this is the software. So in terms of structure of the song, I mentioned in the first episode, I tend to follow a pretty stock standard structure when I begin writing a song on stream. And then as I go, I'll see how it feels, feel it out, and then I might make some changes. So this particular structure, we went main riff, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, verse variation, breakdown, chorus, outro riff, main riff. In this song, the chorus and the main riff are the same riff, but the difference between the marker of main riff and chorus is one will have vocals over it and one won't. So about halfway through this main riff, we have a little main riff variation. It's a little thing to break up the intro of the song just for a little bit of potential variation. Now, the thing with a lot of these things is if the song gets picked by the band, they may or may not make the cut and could be changed completely. So sometimes if I have an idea of a riff, I will just put it in the draft regardless. Even sometimes if I don't think it sounds good in there, I'll put it in there so that it's there for the band to hear. And then they can be like, actually, yeah, I quite like that riff, but maybe we should put it here. Or maybe they'll be like, actually, I like it where it is like that. Or maybe they'll be like, actually, I don't like that riff at all. Let's cut it. I will try put them in somewhere just so that they're there. Because you got to remember, tuning in, this is not the final song. This is the skeletons. And I'm not trying to build the muscles. I'm not trying to put all the tendons in the organs. I'm just building the frame. So let's take a look at this little variation anyway. <laughs> pretty you know i've mentioned before i love the kind of chug chug melody riff now i also towards the second half of this variation open it up into this right so i move from the palm mutes to opening it up i'm not entirely sure how i feel about it at this point but like i mentioned it's all there just so that the boys can see some of the potential routes we could go with the song. I think that sort of opening it up like that would sound better on a much lower tuning. And I think it's because we're up in drop C sharp. It can make it feel a little bit hollow, but that's just me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. So that whole section of the main riff variation sounds like this. Uh, I will make a little disclaimer for anyone who's like, bro, are you leaking all the new Alien Weaponry tracks? Now, <laughs> there are a lot of tracks that I have already taken to the band and we have worked through. I will not be showing any of that stuff. Like any of the songs that I, when I write them, I think that they genuinely could be Alien Weaponry songs, like without a doubt. I will not be showing you my process of those now if those songs make it through the process and they make it onto the final album and we release an album and it's got these songs on it then we can come back and i'll make videos looking at my uh you know my session on when i wrote some of those songs because that'll be quite interesting but don't get me wrong i ain't gonna let those out before they're done right so the verse for the song so for this one it was a pretty it's a pretty upbeat energetic main riff so the verse i slowed it down and got chuggy
Now, the pre-chorus is the variation from the main riff. And it's just in the beginning. So what we did in the beginning was the main riff and then the variation. So to flip it, we're going to do the variation and then the main riff. Because the chorus is the main riff. And so now the pre-chorus is that snippet of the variation. The, the muted variation. So there you can hear the synth. So I mentioned at the beginning there is a synth pad. This is where it's introduced and it sounds like the soloed. Super alien, techno-y. Also one of my biggest inspirations is film score. Uh, and so this, this reminds me of Song of the Elves from Lord of the Rings, if anyone's familiar. That bit right there, so if you know, you know. And I think altogether, it actually creates quite a, almost a video game soundtrack kind of sound. Super high energy, you could imagine you doing something like a boss fight or something. So anyway, just, just, just for your ears, here's the chorus section again. So then, pretty straightforward, I've just copy and pasted the verse again. Now we come up here to a little verse variation. Now this part was quite cool, very Gojira-esque. As someone who didn't actively listen to Gojira before touring with them, you know, after the tours I started picking up on those Gojira-isms in their music. So this is definitely, this next section here, before the breakdown, is definitely reminiscent of something Gojira. There's quite a few layers happening in this little verse variation. Really slows down, kind of gets quite groovy, but there's guitar, bass, obviously drums, but then there's three, four layers of synth happening here. So this is what the guitar sounds like for this section. This is the first layer of the synth. The second layer, which is the left and the right synth, sounds like this. Now the third layer, what I've done is I, I, I did this track higher up an octave again, and then I bounced it, and then I cut it on every 16th note to create a syncopated synth-like punch rhythm. This is what it sounds like from start to finish. Just sort of comes in there and it sort of changes the mood, but then right after it, we get into this very fast mushigary breakdown. Now, here's, here's how I sort of approach dynamics. So dynamics is a big part of making one riff last longer, okay? So you can do dynamics through a whole multitude of ways. Drums is the obvious one. This riff is an example of that too. You've got this drum beat going in the first bit, and then it slows down to this. And the riff is the same for the most part. Rhythmically, the riff is the same. So that's one way to change the feeling of the riff, right? You're classic. You half time it and it makes it nastier. Now, another way that you can do that is through the dynamics of the actual guitar playing. So for the first half of the riff, I'm doing that rhythm on one string. The drum beat goes to the half time. I open it up to the three strings muted. It, it also adds dynamics and adds to the heaviness of the halftime. Whew, man, I am out of practice for those triplets. That, that was burning. <laughs> but luckily, obviously, if you haven't picked up on it, when I'm playing those bits back, I'm not, I'm not actually playing it on the guitar because I've already recorded it, okay? But I'm just doing that so that you know, if you're curious about what notes I'm playing, 
just so that you can see it. But I'm not actually playing that moment live. And that's basically this entire song. I'm going to take, you know, a snippet from each of those moments. I'll compile them together in sort of a very quick 30 second, one minute playthrough. So that for those of you that might want to hear the riff, uh, the riff ideas and, and what we've looked at from start to finish, I'll make a very compressed version. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening to this writing walkthrough. Hope you enjoy. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. It's free, in it? And here is Draft 30 Snippet. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>